Development of Agriculture Early Agriculture in Egypt Good morning, Sam. Long time not seen, my friend. Oh my, Anderson. How have you been, buddy? I am fine. So how's business? I mean, farming. Fantastic. And you haven't introduced me to your young friend. Thank you, sir. My name is Luanda. Luanda Magere. The Luo legendary? Actually, Sam, I'm here to show this young man around your farm and give him a head start about how and when humans developed agriculture. We do still have your permission, right? Absolutely, Anderson. Please feel at home. See you around, guys, and good luck. Thank you. Luanda, come with me to the wheat field over there. Why there? Because there's a beautiful tree with a nice shade to rest and talk. Plus, wheat was one of the earliest crops to be cultivated by man. Hmm, that's cute to know. And I take it you want to tell me a story about early agriculture. You got it. And as Sam would have it, agriculture entails crop cultivation and livestock rearing. Historians believe that early man began agriculture around the New Stone Age, or Neolithic period, with the development of better and improved tools. So that means he stopped hunting and gathering altogether? Essentially, yes. In fact, hunting and gathering for food had become tiring and discouraging as man would return without any catch. Besides, wild animals kept migrating, making life even more difficult for man. And hard rain must have made it almost impossible to go hunting. Is that true? Very thoughtful. Not very fun to hunt when you're getting soaked in the rain. Now, some theorists suggest agriculture must have developed independently in various parts of the world. Others propose it all started in Mesopotamia, after which it spread to the rest of the world. Now I know. Tell me, did man begin domesticating animals and crops at the same time? Mm, no. It's argued that he first tamed animals, the dog to be specific. The dog would come in handy during hunting. Now with time, he started taming other animals that were less wild, like cattle, sheep, and goats. Wow. And did all the animals come from the same place? Mm, no, again. Cattle, sheep, and goats are thought to have originated from Southwest Asia. But cattle seem to have started in many places. Greece, Cretan, Algeria, and Egypt also have some cattle origins. Now, slowly it crept down Africa, reaching the southern point around 2000 BC. Wow. So, it seems a lot of animals came nearby Mesopotamia and Upper Africa. That is a good way to group them together. Of course, this came with benefits. Mind telling me some? Easy. Cow and gods gave man meat, milk, and skin that he was clothing. Yes. Plus, oxen and donkeys provided him with animal power. He could trade his animals with other items, say, crops that his neighbors were now cultivating. Remember I mentioned at the beginning that wheat is one of the earliest crops to be domesticated by man? Yes, and you brought me down here to see this wheat field. Good, it all ties together. Now, I want you to take a wild guess where wheat cultivation was first seen in Africa. Mmm, was in Gisho. <laughs> no, but that's a good try anyway, since wheat is now a popular crop in that region. But for my answer, we are talking Egypt. Oh, Egypt, the country of the pharaohs. But wait a minute, I thought Egypt is in the desert. How did the Egyptians cultivate wheat? Good observation, keen boy. It is true, Egypt is a desert country, but don't forget, the Nile River crosses it. This made irrigation possible along the fertile Nile Valley. Besides, indigenous crops like wheat and barley were already locally available. And again, since early civilization existed in ancient Egypt, better farm tools like the ox plow and bronze hoe had been developed. Bronze, like the start of the Bronze Age, I guess. Now, this is getting interesting. 
I doubt if they had water generators to pump water from the Nile to irrigate their crops. Wow. You know what, Luanda? You are too clever for your age. All right. So initially, water from the Nile flooded the fields, but this was wasteful and known as basin irrigation. Now, soon after, canals were built, which are a better way to transport the water and less waste. An improvement on this system was developed called the Shadouf, which was simply a long pole with a huge weight and a bucket tied on either ends, making lifting water easy. The pole was supported by vertical posts. Shadouf. Mm, okay, not bad. Now I guess I am gonna learn some more Shadouf on Wikipedia. So, after growing their wheat, they traded with cows from Morocco since Morocco was uh, their neighboring country. <laughs> you are a funny man. I don't know that Morocco was that developed at this time, but they didn't have to because Egypt kept livestock too. This included cattle, sheep, goats, ducks, and chickens. Now, in addition to the wheat and barley, Egyptian farmers also cultivated vegetables, beans, figs, and fruits. Hmm. And now I'm guessing you're going to ask me how the farmers benefited from the crops and livestock they kept. Yep. Now please, go ahead. I knew it. Uh, first, it brought food in plenty. Then, they sold the excess to get items they needed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely correct. In addition, increased food supply ensured farmers were more permanently settled. As a result, populations exploded leading to the development of urban centers like Memphis and Thebes and Cairo. That was a nice story. I absolutely enjoyed it. Now, this word, meso, meso, mesotop, keeps popping up in my mind. Is that still on that? Oh boy, you are a comedian. All right, right now we take a break and go see what Sam has prepared us for lunch in Luanda, hmm? it is called Mesopotamia. Oh, 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 you are so sweet, Juan Anderson. Sure. <laughs> 